All right, so we're running. So I'm uh, um, Jason Parsons, um, IA at uh, Emerson Elementary School. Okay, so good morning. I'm Renee Ostapov. I'm going to be the hearing officer um, in this matter. Okay. So this hearing is set because of the governing board's uh, district policy GDQD-R. Um, and we are going to listen um, to any evidence or any statements that you have provided. Right. And also the districts. And then after this, um, either today or shortly thereafter, I'll make a recommendation to the board. Um, Okay. If they should move forward with the termination. Okay. Um, and we're going to start the hearing today on January uh, 20th, um, 2024, okay. and at 9.30 a.m. at the district office. Okay. Okay. All right. So first, I guess let's do um, representative from the Phoenix uh, district. And you want to go ahead and summarize um, the recommendations that you would be making to the board and any supporting information. Yeah, but this is on behalf of the superintendent who makes the recommendation to the governing board. Okay. And we made a recommendation on December 5th of 2023. I'm going to share most of that from that. I might, and for your record, I'm Jed Bowman. I'm the um, assistant superintendent for human resources in mm -hmm. Phoenix Elementary School District number one. Um, Mr. Parsons and I have met a few times in the last couple months. And I met with him last week to outline and he's received a copy of the letter for the reasons that we're making the school district's making the recommendation for his termination of employment. Specifically, it starts with a letter of direction that he received from his principal back on September 18th, 2023. That letter of direction was a result of Mr. Parsons having physical contact with two students at the time. One was an autistic boy in a, in a class that he was an IA in, and the other one was a student out um, preparing to get on a school bus. Uh, they were both autistic students. Oh, wait, one moment. We're going to let him oh, speak. Sorry, no, sorry. that's okay. okay. You're totally okay. Yeah. We're going to let him speak first, and then you can, okay? Okay, yeah. Yes. And, and so at that point in time, we decided to impose informal discipline with the letter of direction from the principal to um, emphasize that he... Uh, not he's not to have his hands on kids unless it's an emergency situation as outlined in our policy so we met with him and went over that with him and gave him that letter of direction and specifically the, the part of, of relevance from that letter is uh, that he was immediately directed to refrain from using any physical contact with students as a response to non-emergency behavior and to ensure that at all times he maintained proper respectful relationships with students that maintain their well-being. Should he ever be in the rare situation, this is, I'm just changing it slightly, uh, where at a last resort a student may need to be restrained to address imminent danger because of serious harm to students, staff, others, or self-harm, and all other de-escalation techniques have not worked, then and only then may he use proper CPI training techniques um, for restraint in accordance with governing board policy JLDP restraint and seclusion. So we were re-emphasizing that language came specifically from that policy. So he received that. He came back um, to Emerson and he was reassigned. Uh, the principal at the time felt like a reassignment was necessary. So he was trying to find a successful placement for Mr. Parsons, um, especially um, to not be with the young student that he had held down in class or restrained inappropriately in class. So he was um, reassigned there and then, oh, I, it was about um, in, in November, I gotta get the timeline. Get the exact date, on November 2nd, the principal of the school, Mr. Lodato, contacted me and shared that he had received um, reports that Mr. Parsons had tackled a student to get a football from him out on the playground at the end of the recess period. So when Mr. Lodato conducted the investigation of that incident, he interviewed um, students independently, very and immediately right after the incident, where he purposely staggered them 
and this is all in his narrative that so that they wouldn't have an opportunity to talk to each other and then he interviewed them and I had um, I have the uh, witness statements from those students he interviewed six students five of the six um, indicated that they saw Mr. Parsons tackle um, the young man that was the young student that was um, involved in the situation as a result of that then we we looked at his uh, letter of direction and, and tackling a student to get a football was a direct violation of that letter of direction that um, we didn't feel that he was safe to be around kids at that point in time. The other thing that happened was while that incident was reported between then and concluding that incident, Mr. Parsons made a video that was shared and distributed pretty um, uh, district district wide for who would read it and see, or watch it see it including the school board and the superintendent at the time and so then that got um, shared with me and then in that video there were other things that ended up being concerning um, one was the potential compromising of privacy of students that were in the class that he was in at the time that was a, now, now he was in a fourth grade class with a I believe she's a gen ed teacher, Mrs. Douglas. And at that point in time, um, he, he shared uh, just specific information about students that could probably be used to identify who they were. In addition to that, he um, used language that was unprofes unprofessional, probably not appropriate, talking about that students need to be yelled at and that they deserved or they should get tongue lashings. Um, and in addition to that, he was critical of district discipline policy and school discipline practices. And um, he also addressed the football incident in his words in that, and that was our written statement from him that he shared with Mr. Lodato that we just needed to watch that and that would get, share his account of that incident. Um, along with that, when he created the video, he shared with others to go and watch the video. And that was a violation of the paid administrative leave letter that he received as a result while we were investigating the incident of, of the, at the time, the alleged tackling of the student. And, put, and actually, the, the student did uh, bump his head and had an injured head, too, but not seriously. So... Um, At that point in time, when you took the totality of the letter of direction, the physical contact with the student, the violation of the uh, paid administrative leave letter, which clearly shows that he had reached out to people to watch his video, and the um, concerning behaviors and other things that were shared in the video, the uh, recommendation from our school district is to terminate his employment. It's also important to note that we've determined through his work agreement that he's an at-will employee. And so the, the primary reason why we're here is out of the uh, caution to give him a due process right to have a, an informal hearing to be able to share his story in front of a hearing officer. So probably should have said that to begin with. <laughs> That's okay. Thank you. Appreciate that. Okay. Okay. So now it's your turn. Okay. Um, could you um, explain exactly what the term "at will" employee means and how it uh, different how it differentiates between um, uh, because basically, you no, know, yeah, he's hired hired on as a contract employee, and so then "at will" means that what? So what exactly does that uh, does that will mean? Uh, so, um, Mr. Parson, so this you're not going to have an opportunity to. Question us, but I will. Yeah. I will answer this question only because it's important for you to be able to continue with your testimony. Right. Mm -hmm. um, the governing board policies of Phoenix Elementary uh, create two classifications of employees. Yeah. One are at will employees; mm -hmm. those that do not have a contract, do not are not for term. Oh, and okay. Term employees, and it's the district's position that you are an at will employee. Um, you get you were given a work agreement, mm -hmm. which is a, essentially a notice of employment of an intent to employ you mm -hmm. for a certain period of time. But even in that agreement, it says that you are an at-will employee. Mm -hmm. Okay. So anyways, um, so as far as the tackling incident, because it is the one that um, 
that that's that has triggered this. Um, um, it's interesting that um, there were three other staff members on the playground, and from what you've just described, none of them were interviewed. Okay, even though one of them was with a hundred feet of them and made eye contact with me after I got off the ground, and she will be able to verify that the boy never went to the ground, period. Okay, and so that is a lie. And also, uh, if, um, uh, um, no, uh, if, if we were to ask every one of the teachers of those five kids that claimed that I tackled him, you know, and ask them, do you trust the integrity of this child? They would tell you no. That, it's, that every one of these kids are habitual liars. You catch them doing something wrong and they deny it. They will call you a liar for, for accusing them. Okay. And so none of these witnesses have a shred of credibility amongst their teachers. Whether you're talking about the middle school teachers, the specialist teachers, I guarantee you none of these students have a shred of credibility amongst their teachers and for them to be the only ones to be asked is absolutely ludicrous okay and so um you know and, and so and as far as you know that you know that the list of other witnesses that that's that's um i provided um that's um let me show you which one you know so basically this one right here Okay. No, no. Who all I I would want want to um, you know, to to call call as witnesses. And of course, we wouldn't have time to call every single person that this would apply to. But nevertheless, uh, as far as um, you know, um, you know, you no, know, like I said, you know, all you know, all the teachers, you know, who you know who ha have these kids. You know, and basically, again, this goes to questioning the school district's policy, which is not allowed. That's the whole thing is if the school district would 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 actually care about the about the staff. OK, and would ask the staff, especially when you're talking about middle school, does the, the discipline policy work? One of them that has told me flat out, no, you know, this was long, long before, you know, this incident ever occurred. So it's not a violation of anything. And I guarantee you, none of them believe in the policy, and yet the district refuses to open this up to public dialogue on the policy. Can I and, ask you to just lower your voice? Uh, just, no, you're okay. okay. Yeah, just I'm you lower, Just a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, thank that's, you. that's actually an aspect of, of my autism is volume control. So, Not yeah, all you need to do is you go like this okay. or like this. Okay. Yeah. I, I teach all my friends to do that, so okay. I won't be offended. So. Okay. Anyway. Thank you. Thanks. I appreciate that. Yeah. Okay. Ms. Oshkoff, can I also ask that yeah. um, Mr. Parsons um, stick to uh, what happened in the incident as opposed okay. to a, 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 a critique over the policies? And whether or not well, yeah. it, if, if you want to understand why I made the video, okay, it, it's because the fact that I have been bringing these issues up. You know, um, and go, and the reason why I brought up, you know, the, an incident that happened last year is because once again, you know, basically sent, uh, I started working here in November of, of 2021. The first six months was paradise. Uh, it, uh, I was doing exactly what I said out here, building bridges between autistics uh, and neurotypicals, you know, and educators and, and everything was going great. Okay. It's, you know, um, again, if you watch the video, I talked. About the 80-20 principle, if you focus on developing your character, your um, um, your belief system, and how you present it, you can win over 80% of the people. The other 20%, there's nothing you can do about them. Okay, well, the for the first six months, I was only working with 80 percenters, people that respected me, people that listened to me. Then in March, it, you know, um, a bunch of juggling had to be you no know, you no know, done in order to. Um, to, to um, you know, cover you know, staff losses, turnover, and stuff like that. And I got paired up with three IAs that were 20 percenters, okay? And, and so basically, on one side, you have me advocating the, the stuff that every autistic expert is going to say, okay? I was mentored by Sue Gallabach, a now-retired occupational therapist, okay, who also co-organized... Um, 
co-organizes co the support group, okay? And, um, and so I've been thoroughly trained on how to understand autism. And on, the, uh, on, on this side, you have three people, okay? So, oh, it's simple math. Forget about uh, what's right. Let's just do simple math. If we lose Jason, we have to replace one employee. If we, if we have the, you know, side with the other three, then we have to replace three employees. It wasn't about what was the right thing. It was about three against one, okay? And so what happened is this empowered, you know, you know that these individuals, and it became, uh, you know, turned into what I would consider bullying, okay? And, and that, that finally reached a climax um, um, a year ago, November, November 2022, when, when I wrote the, the letter asking for parental intervention because the school was not protecting me from these bullies, okay? And, um, and, in, and in that letter, you know, I made mention that, that, um, that Mr. Schiffman was a witness, and I found out after I came back from leave, they never interviewed Mr. Schiffman. So once again, you have a situation where, where, um, where, where, where basically the, o o the only people that, that were asked, you know, their view of what happened were the ones that, that were opposed to me. The people that would have spoke up for me were never asked, okay? And so, um, and, and, and then finally, um, March of last year, it, um, I, I reached my breaking point, you know, um, because one of the IAs literally accu you know, accused me of yelling at, at her and induced a teacher and multiple other IAs into lying to support her. And what had happened was, okay, what one of the students that I wasn't working, you know, with her before, but it was one of the early students I worked with and I connected to real strong, you know, you know she had forgot money for the book fair. And so it's like, okay, this girl loves books. Okay. And so I, I was, so I, uh, so I pulled out my wallet and I was going to say, you know, here's $20 for the, and, and yes, I, I, I realize now that, that yes, yeah, it's, oh, sorry. Yeah. No, it was, no, it was, no, not appropriate. Okay. But you no. Know, and so, and, and I fully acknowledge that, but, but the, but the IA, you no, know, no acted like, you know, no, she was the one that started, you know, it basically, it's like, you no, know, just offering it. She acted like I was a pedophile for even offering it. And this isn't the first time, you know, um, you know, yeah, okay, so look, so you no, know, when when kids want to be comforted, they want to get on your lap and be held. Okay, I understand that that's that that's contrary to professional standards and, and everything, you no know, lot like that, which I would be more than happy to have a discussion whether or not it should be contrary, but we'll just set that aside. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. But that doesn't make me a pedophile. Yeah. Okay. And, and, you know, and this, you know, the one girl that I, was, that I was speaking about earlier, okay, you know, her and I share um, an aversion to chaos. Okay. So I understand her. And so what I was trying to do is I was trying to train her, you know, how to, calm her mind the way I've learned to calm my own mind in chaotic situations. But the thing is, when, when the chaos is being ca caused by uh, another student having a temper tantrum, it's, this is not a neurological thing. This is not an autism thing. This is people caving into him, okay? And oh, by the way, this is the same boy that, that's, that I got in trouble for pinning later on because his behavior is completely deteriorated under the school's policy. Well, you know, where he's becoming more and more violent, he's destroying property, and that's the reason why I was restraining him in the first place, because he was on a rampage, destroying property, and, and endangering himself by provoke, possibly provoking two other students who, um, who he has provoked before, and if we're not in position to intervene, they would tear him from limb for limb, because they are way bigger, way stronger, and, and way more violent than he is but when they get triggered. Okay, so if you want to talk about, you know, preventing injuries, yes. When you understand the, the makeup of that class, yes, I was literally, you know, you know, preventing injury from that child by stopping him from triggering these other children. Okay, but anyways, but again, you know, going back to, you know, that, you know, that, uh, you know again, when I was, you know, whispering into the ears 
of this girl in order to try to you know train you no know, try to instill these abilities again people acted like I was some kind of pedophile okay the whole reason you, you would you know the whole reason I came here you know to get you know to work this job is because I understand that I have insights you know and have the ability to build connections with autistics that 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 non-autistics are not going to be able to do you know, unless they're trained to do it, okay? And, and, and that's the whole thing is that, you know, you, you, know, you want to talk about how, you know, I shouldn't, oh, oh and as far as the, um, okay, so the, the two children whose um, privacy I violated, okay, well, um, the, the one with the medical conditions, hey, invite their parents to come here and lodge the complaint. They will side with me. Okay, there is nothing I said about that boy that isn't common knowledge. And I guarantee you, they will, that, in fact, I, you know, I want them as my wit, you know, as one of my witnesses, because that they, they will absolutely tell you that there is nothing that I said that violated their privacy. And the whole point that I was making it is that, um, because I thought, you know, one of the reasons I was being suspended is because, you know, something that happened in the fourth, sorry, in the fourth grade room. You know, you know, after that, you know, and so, um, and, and, you know, but, um, you know, you know, but anyway, so, so, you know, but, but, you know, his, his, um, LPN, or I'm sorry, uh, um, not, not LPN, um, the next one down, CNA, okay, which everybody knows why he's there. Again, there, there's no violation of privacy because it is common knowledge, okay, and it, you know, he is a witness to how utterly contemptful that that class treats me and Miss Douglas, okay, and um, and, and including the the um, the child uh, of the um, of the governing board member, okay, you know who is literally said in front of 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 all of his classmates that 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 he does not have to listen to the teacher, okay. And so, so that, that was what I was making a point is we have witnesses of the utter contempt that Miss Douglas and I were treated in that classroom. Okay. And so, and then, um, no, and so, no, and, and, and then also to wrap up the whole, um, football incident. Okay. So, so again, there was another staff member there within a hundred feet of me, we made eye contact when I got off the ground. Okay. If I was really as out of control, why did not she not come over and order me to get off that boy? Okay. And then immediately report me to, to Mr. Lodato. So that way I could be removed from sight within 15 minutes of that incident happening. Okay. You know, that's the whole thing is that if it actually happened the way that that's you no know, that that's that is claim that then that that other um staff member would be negligent in her duty in protecting the children if she simply did nothing while i was engaged in the behavior that has been described so now you you've mentioned witnesses and who was interviewed but i can you tell me in your own words what happened when we were talking about the football incident. Okay, so basically what would happen is these kids every single day show complete contempt to the teachers that, you know, as soon as we say, you know, it's time to come in, they just keep playing with the ball. Okay. Okay, so what I did was I, I use a football technique that I've been seeing done for like 40 years, okay, is I came up from behind him and I swiped at the ball. Well, actually, I swiped with my right hand, mm -hmm. okay. Okay. At the ball. I did not go for the child. I went for the ball. Okay. And I will acknowledge that, that the child did catch me a little bit by surprise by, by turning. And so I, I did briefly, you know, make contact with, with his uh, left shoulder inadvertently. I did not intend to. As soon as I realized it, I released him. Okay. I went to the ground, you know, you know to get the football. But he never went to the ground. Um, as to the video, right? Okay. Um, you were given a letter, right? Which the district has provided me. Mm -hmm. Just want to make sure you have a chance to address each. Um, yeah. Item. Let me find it in here. 
Um, and it stated that you were to have no contact. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. And so do you believe that you were in violation of that? Oh, I don't deny that that's uh, that I that I, that it's that that's that I that I fully knew what I was doing. Okay. That, that it was a violation. Okay. But at the same time, it's like I need somebody that's going to fight for me because, like I said, since since March of two thousand and twenty-two. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have literally been bullied by coworkers. Now I'm being bullied by students. Oh, by the way, those students are bullying all their teachers. Okay. Okay. The, the district um, so-called discipline policy has empowered these children to bully their teachers. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so, yeah, I need somebody to actually stand up for me. If somebody would actually, you know, you know during all this time, you know, um, nearly two years now, you know, you know, um, you know, uh, actually, you know, you know, Ha handled the, these matters impartially, handled them uh, according to what's right rather than the, than, than the simple math that, okay, there's one Jason versus anywhere from three to five, you know, co-workers that are bullying him. Uh, again, uh, it was never more than maybe 20%. So most of my co-workers were great, mm -hmm. were, were very, you know, interested in what I had to say and, and understand, you know, what, what I, you know, what, you know, what I could teach them. But it's that 20%, you know, that were empowered to literally bully me, okay? And, um, you know, and so, so yes, that's basically what I'm doing. I'm looking for somebody that will stand up for me. And, and so tomorrow, um, you know, um, assuming that it's not raining tomorrow, <laughs> I'll be in front of the state capitol, okay? Handing out this literature, letting them know what's going on. Hoping you know that the state legislators and the media, who I know are, are permanently camped there, mm -hmm. you know, are, are going to listen and realize that this is ridiculous. That that there needs to be intervention because this has gone on too far. Can I ask you a question? Did you ever report any of this? Use your words, bullying, to any of your superiors or any. Of the Mr. Ladato and I talked about it all the time. Okay. Mr. Lovelady and I, um, the master teacher over. Uh, of the autism program okay. over there. Okay. okay, so yeah, the. Um, okay, thank you. One second, I'm looking over the paperwork. Um, so, just for our record, you're just stating that you never. You did make contact with the student. Inadvertent, yes. Inadvertently with your hand while you were trying to push on the football. Well, while I was, you know, getting the football. Okay. Yeah. Can I also ask, um, back to the restraint of the student? Right. Okay. Are you CPI trained? Yes. Okay, so you have a CPI certificate. Um, uh, I guess uh, the school did the CPI training. Okay, and you were there for all of it? Uh, yes. Okay. So can I ask you why you had to deviate from that? Um, why you felt the need to deviate from the CPI because, because at least one of those boys that would have beat the snot out of him was within five feet of him while he was destroying the class. Okay. 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 Thank you. Um, one moment. Let me just look over everything. Okay, so you've addressed what happened on the playground. Right. Okay, we've addressed the first making the restraint of the student. Right. And then also violating your um, um, where is it right here? Your paid admin leave. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Do you have anything else regarding those three incidences that you think I should know before I make my recommendation to the board? Um. No, I think I've. Um pretty much said everything so okay thank you um all right do you have anything else you want to clarify or address i don't think so okay okay so i have the ability to make a decision today on what my recommendation would be right. um or i can um make one shortly thereafter right okay 
So I'm going to explain why I'm going to make my recommendation. Um, so I understand that you said that you felt bullied and that you had reported it. That's a little outside of the scope of what I can look at. Mm -hmm. I'm just looking at these incidences. Right. So today you did let me know that you did willingly violate your um, letter of paid administrative leave. Mm -hmm. Okay. You did let me know that you violated school policy. You had your reasons, but mm -hmm. I'm saying what I, what I can look at is yep. did you violate it and that restraint of yep. that student? And from what I'm hearing from you and everything I've been seeing today, I would say yes, um, that it would be my recommendation that they would move forward with the termination. Okay, well, I would point out that, that okay, that, that's, that restraint of that child uh, is an issue that was already addressed. Yeah. And, and so, you know, and, um, you know and, and I was on administrative leave for, what, about a week? Mm -hmm. you, know, um, you, know, it, you know, and so I would consider that double jeopardy. To, to use that as a basis, as an additional basis for this decision. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't kind of work within the scope of what I can look at. Mm -hmm. So again, I totally hear your concerns mm -hmm. about the way things are ran, policies, you mm -hmm. feel policies need to change. I fully hear you on all mm -hmm. of that. But what I can look at is, was the policy violated? Mm -hmm. And from everything you've told me and everything I've heard from the school, yep. it appears that policy has been violated. So you are fully within your, you know, your rights to address those other issues. Right. But today, what I can look at, mm -hmm. I can only look at this, and it appears that you did. So again, it would be just my recommendation. The right. board can still, they can say otherwise. Mm -hmm. But from everything that's been addressed today, it would be recommendation for termination because these policies mm -hmm. appear to be violated. Okay, does that make sense? Oh yeah, it's, uh, okay. it's, it's what I expected. I'm, very sim I'm sympathetic yeah. with you. I understand that there are lots of other things yeah. outside of that and you have other ap legal avenues for those. But within this um, right now, with my recommendation, it would be that the policy was violated, and therefore we'd have to recommend term termination. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, you know, I, in fact, uh, I even told, um, um, I'm sorry, I, Bo, Mr. Bowman there, mm -hmm. that, that's, that I fully expected you know, this to happen. You know? And so the, and the whole reason why I'm going to the court of public opinion is because I know for a fact that I have no chance you know, you know, it, in this, you know, um, particular procedure. And so, again, what's the point of even following these rules when I know I'm still going to get fired, even if I do follow your rules? You know, there is a, there is absolutely no incentive for me to follow your rules. Okay. Let me just, uh, Dr. Gonzalez, you have to leave, don't you? Yes. Okay. We're, we're, we're yeah. Here. Yep, that's fine. Yeah, you know, I mean, I think we're pretty much wrapped up anyways. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we're going to go ahead and conclude the hearing. Like mm -hmm. I said, um, it does appear from your direct mm -hmm. statement that policies were violated. Um, even though you don't respect those policies, that's fine, or support those. But my scope is policies were, were violated, so mm -hmm. therefore I would recommend termination to the board. Well, okay. okay. Mm -hmm. But thank you yep. very much, and I appreciate you coming in. Yep. Okay.